Hello, 8th graders. Today we are doing Module 5, Problem Set for Lesson Number 2. And today we're determining if something is a function or is not a function. Remember, a function has um, each input has exactly one output. And we can think of um, a function as like a function machine. So one thing goes in and one thing comes out each time. Okay. If you have one thing go, come in and two different things come out, it's not a function. For everything that goes in, just one thing will come out. So they want to know, looking at this one, this is the number of minutes Francisco spends at the gym each day of the week. Is this a function? For day one, 35. Day two, 45. Day three, 30. Day four, 45, day 5, 35, day 6, 0, and day 7, 0. This is our input. X is our input. Y is our output. So, do we have any inputs, any of these, giving us more than one answer? There's only one answer for 1. 2 only has one output. 3 only has one output. 4 only has one output. 5 only has one output. 6 only has one output, and 7 only has one output. Notice 6 and 7 have the same output, but that's okay. Each input only has one. So 6 only has one output, 0. 7 only has one output, 0. doesn't matter that these are the same because there's different inputs. So yes, this is a function. Let's look at... Uh, this one, number two. Now, nine has, let's compare our inputs to our outputs. Nine has an output of 11. Eight has an output of 15. Seven has an output of 19. Eight has, a, eight has an output of 20. Wait, 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 wait. Here we have an input. When we put input eight, we get 15. But here when we input eight, we get 24. Hmm. So this input of 8 gives me two different outputs. So remember, each input can only have one output, but this input has two different outputs. So no, not a function. Number 3. Olivia examines the table. For the value before, um, that's a possible word to describe this function could be negative 2x plus 9. Is she correct? Could this be negative 2x plus 9? <clears throat> well, let's look. Let's take a couple of our x's and see if we put it into here, we'll get our y. So, uh, negative 2x plus 9, if x is 0... If x is 0, we'd have a negative 2 times 0 plus 9. Is negative 2 times 0, 0 plus 9 is 9. That works. Um, let's try 8. We'd have a negative 2 times 8 plus 9. Negative 2 times negative 16 plus 9. Negative 6, it would be negative 7. That's correct. Let's try negative 4. 2 times negative 4 plus 9. Negative 2, I'm sorry. Negative 2 times negative 4. That's a positive 8 plus 9, 17. That's correct. I want to try 20. Negative 2 times 20 is negative 40 plus 9 would be a negative 31. So yes, this looks like it is because it seems like all of these are working. Actually, let's, um, yep, so I'd say yes. 
Okay, Peter says that the data set in part A describes a function, but the data in part B does not. Do you agree? Is this the function? For every input, do we have just one output? One input for one. Input two, we just get 10. Three, we get 32. Four, we get six. Five, six, seven. So we have all our inputs just get one output. So yes, I agree. Yes, a function. And let's look at this one. Negative 6, negative 15 gets us negative 9, negative 3, negative 2. Ne Ooh, look at sometimes negative 3 gives us 14, sometimes negative 3 gives us 2. So one input with two different outputs. So no, not a function. And our question asks, Peter says that A is a function and B is not. Do we agree? Yeah, because we said this is a function, this is not. So yes, Peter is correct. Yes, Peter is correct. Number five, they want us to figure out if our input is negative 3, what's our x output? So we got to take x and put it into this equation to get our output. Our equation is x squared plus 4. So we'd have negative 3 squared plus 4. Negative 3 squared would be 9. Negative times a negative is a positive. 9 plus 4 would be 13. Here we're going to have a negative 2 squared plus 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive. 4 plus 4 is 8. And negative 1 squared plus 4. 1 times 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. 1 plus 4 is 5. 0 squared plus 4 is going to be 4. 1 squared, 1 times 1, is 1 plus 4 is 5. Notice that although we have the same output, they're different inputs, so we don't have to worry. We have to worry when we have the same in, uh, when we have uh, input giving us this uh, two different outputs. Uh, negative, I'm sorry, two times two is four. I'm sorry, two times two. Yep, two squared is four plus four is eight. Three squared, three times three is nine plus four is thirteen. Four squared, four times four is sixteen. Plus 4 is 20. Let's go on to number 6. Um, the inputs and outputs represent a situation where constant rate can be assumed. Determine the rule that describes the function. So we have a constant rate of change. So what is that change? How much is our output changing every time? To go from 3 to 8, we go up 5. From go to 8 to 13, we go up 5. To go from 13 to 18, we're going up 5. 18 to 23, we're going up 5. And each change up here is going up 1, right? So we have our, our remember, delta y over delta x. Our change in our y is 5 every time. The change in our x is going to be 1 every time. So our slope is going to be 5 for this equation, right? So y is going to equal 5x. But what if x is 0? If x is 0, we're going to get 8. But 5 times 0 is 0. So how do we get to that 8? We're going to have to add 8. Remember, this is our y-intercept. Okay, this is our y-intercept. So let's check it. Let's say we pick 3. Well, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 8 would be 23. That works. Let's try 6. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 8 is 38. So this is our equation.
we found our change, our constant change, which is our slope. And then we found out um, what it is when it's zero, which would be our y-intercept. And we can do this because they said the constant change, constant rate was assumed. Let's look at seven. Examine the drawing. Hold on a second. Okay, examine the data in the table below. The inputs represent the number of bags of candy purchased, and the outputs represents the cost. Determine if one bag of candy, assuming the price per bag is the same no matter how many you purchased, okay? So we have a constant rate for that, right? So there's a couple ways we can do this. If I went from four bags to five bags, how far did this go up? $1.25, right? So I can assume, because they say it's the same, every time I buy another bag, I'm going to owe another $1.25. Another way I can do it, if uh, four bags cost me $5, so it's $5 for four bags, how much would it be for one bag, right? You can do a, a proportion. Five divided by four would be, well, I can use our calculator. Five, uh, five dollars for four bags. It's a dollar twenty-five each. And that's what we got here, right? So, um, one bag would be a dollar twenty-five. Two would be two fifty. Another dollar twenty-three seventy-five. Six twenty-five and a dollar twenty-five would be seven fifty. Seven fifty and another dollar twenty-five would be eight seventy-five and ten. What would our rule be? Our total cost would be a dollar twenty-five per bag. Total cost is $1.25 times the number of bags you buy. Number four, can you determine the value of the output if the input is for x is negative 4? So what if I wanted to put negative 4 in here? So y would equal $1.25 times negative 4. So we would multiply this out, and y, a positive times a negative is a negative, it would be a negative $5. Okay, we can do that, but does an input of negative 4 make sense? Would we ever put in negative, buy negative 4 bags of candy? Mm, no, it really doesn't make sense, unless we're getting a refund. But in per terms of purchasing, no, um, not makes sense not make sense. It does not make sense to buy negative four bags. If you're going to be buying something, you're going to be using a positive number or zero. Uh, number eight, we are going to skip. Let's go to number nine. Number nine, write a brief explanation to classmate who is absent today about why the table in part A is a function and the table B, B is not. Hmm. So we know that this is a function, but why? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, four, three, two, one. So each input only has one output. Each input only has one output. This one down here is not a function. Why would you say this is not a function? How would you explain that? Because, look at if you have the, neg the input of 1, right? But 
but one has two different outputs. Sometimes when we put in one, we get a two. Sometimes when we put in one, we get a 19. So um, the input of one gives us two separate outputs. Because of that, because one gives us two separate output, it is not a function. Have a good day.